cars, spacecraft, face cream, sports equipment, mobile phones, computers, waterproof clothing, not to mention silk, spiders, goats, and in the future, space elevators. The possibilities and the applications are limitless. And what do they all have in common? Nanoscience, nanotechnology. This is the first in a series of short films that will provide you with an introduction to the world of nanoscience. In this program, we want to explain not just what nanoscience is and what it means to us now, but what it is likely to mean in the future. We also want to open your eyes to the possibilities of a particular science study and what it can lead to. Now let's hear from some experts in the nano world. Instead of having an iPad, which is solid, if you drop it, it's going to break, you'll be able to just roll it up and throw it in your pocket and forget about it. I think our homes will become smarter. I think our foods will be labelled differently. Everything within our home, our workplace, our schools will all have nano somewhere involved. Our newspapers will be electronic. I think we may even have electronic wallpaper in the future. You know, I think our homes will talk to us. This a few years ago would have been science fiction, but now this is going to be science fact in less than 10 years. It's basically the science of the small, and that's needed for most products that we make these days. Imagine a meter. Now make it smaller by a million. Then if you just squeeze that down again, you have a micron. Now make it smaller again. And eventually you arrive at a nanometer. A nanometer is effectively a billionth of a meter. One human hair is 80,000 nanometers wide. You line up five atoms in a row or so when you have uh, a nanometer. Football is about 100 million times smaller than the planet Earth. Things at the nanoscale are 100 million times smaller than a football. Nanoparticles uh, and nanotechnology, because they're not just particles, are becoming part of our everyday life. You'll start to see the word nano incorporated into products, I think, a lot more. As such, it was very, very difficult to manipulate things at that scale, and we're only learning to do this now. If you look at Irish exports, fully 10% of Irish exports are actually nano-enabled. Well, nanotechnology is very important to the economy in Ireland. We've got a number of companies, such as Intel and Leakslip, or Hewlett Packard and Leakslip, and many others that their core business is uh, developing technologies that will go into products that require nano. These companies have a lot of jobs associated with them and if you look at support services that these companies also need to run, you're looking at between 100,000 and 150,000 jobs in Ireland that rely on nano. We're confident that working with these corporations we can begin to help them to become more ambitious to grow the operation in Ireland, and that'll do two things. It'll, it'll create jobs in the R&D space for Irish researchers, but it'll also, quite importantly, consolidate the existing manufacturing jobs. Well, nanotechnology has already been used in a lot of our products. It's used in our sunscreens and our beauty products. Of course, sports equipment, carbon-reinforced bikes, golf clubs. Computers in your iPod and your telephone. I've got an iPhone in my pocket. I'm addicted to the thing, but it couldn't work without nanoscience. It's used in our clothing industry to make our clothes waterproof. It's basically everywhere. There are great opportunities to, to make use of the way, that the, the, the way things do behave down there and uh, make use of them right up here in the, in, in the big world. Well, I suppose everything down at the nanoscale is completely different. Uh, the physics, the chemistry, the, even related to the biology is just completely different. As you shrink things down smaller, we find more and more interesting effects every single day. All the workings have to be compressed into this tiny little space, and that can only be done through nanotechnology. With nanotechnology, we're trying to exploit those properties to do something useful, to do something that wasn't possible before. ICT and the, the microprocessor, there's more and more nanotechnology involved in building a, a Pentium chip, for example. Without it, you couldn't have any of these funky things that, we, that we've come to rely on. You'd be able to make computers for your watch, computers that will run as fast as everyday computers now, but you'd be able to fit them in a watch. The biggest impact uh, will come in the area of nanoelectronics, which will be the next big wave. And towards into the future, it's being developed for medical reasons like diagnosis and disease treatment. So as far as I'm concerned, I would say the nano revolution's already begun. If we think back a century ago, 18th, 19th centuries, we had this wonderful explosion of Victorian technology and building and trains and all kinds of engines. 
We're now at that early phase, except instead of the macroscopic level, where it's bridges and steam engines, we're down at the molecular level. We'll have new technologies which we can barely imagine. We know nanotechnology will revolutionize our lives over the next 20 years, but only if enough people decide to become part of this fascinating technology and join what really will be a revolution. Science and technology is, is everywhere. So if nano is the, the, the leading front for those core subjects like physics, chemistry, biology and engineering, then it's going to really spin off and broaden out into everything. So certainly there will be a nano revolution.